Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be playing a fun list that we can do sort of a cross between a build around and a theme list. And what we've gone for is we're going to play a list that I have called Taria's Arsenal. So, obviously you can tell who we're building around. It's going to be Taria. So, before anything else, what Taria does is Taria gives a range unit rapid fire for the turn. So that basically means it gets to attack twice. Now, there's things in the game like Furia, who gets lots and lots of attack, but that only applies to one attack, so we've not put her in the list. But what we have tried to do is find as many things that work well with Taria as possible. So, given that she gives things rapid fire, we thought we'd also go for a sort of a rapid fire theme list. So, as a captain, we've chosen Zax Jakar, mostly because he's got the most damage and also his knockback of basically his knockback on a basic attack happens each time he attacks so if you've got Tyre Arsenal you place it on Zax he can knock back things twice we've got Maximus as our ubiquitous one drop in every list that we can possibly fit him into and Maximus already has rapid fire so works really well with things as well now we've also got Deadeye so Deadeye I actually think I've thought I've thought about this already it's really really useful but I'm really really tempted to change it but I think giving the additional accuracy and Deadeye being just one of the better two drops is worth keeping in the list for now. And next up, we've got Rickety Backfire. So this is where the rapid fire synergy really comes into play. So with Rickety Backfire, after it attacks, it has a 70% chance to explode and also damage itself and all units in range. So essentially what that means is it gets to attack twice. And so that can be up to six damage for an attack. If you've got rapid fire, that happens again so you can potentially deal 12 damage in one turn with Rickety Backfire alone, which is an immense amount of damage. So absolutely had to be in this list. Next up, we've got Shrapnel. So there's a part of me that's been considering for a while. Shrapnel's actually one of the reasons I wanted to build this list, is basically Shrapnel attacking in a cone. Does that make it worth it for Tower Arsenal and Shrapnel to be in the same list together? I think there's a good chance it does. It might not be in this format of list, but I actually think there's a good chance that that could be a really good way of helping clear out aggressive lists. Next up, we've got Broken Vengeance. Now, I've not tried this, but this does seem to work in my mind, because what Broken Vengeance does is if he's in melee range of a melee unit, if he attacks them, they attack back, he attacks again. Now, if he's got Rapid Fire, I've never tested it, but to me it makes sense that he would attack twice and then get attacked once back. So essentially that doubles his damage output and can even easier one-shot enemy units, which is fantastic synergy again. Uh, we've got Crosshair here, so Crosshair will always crit if she was in play and her target didn't move last turn. Two crits on almost anything in the game will be enough to kill it. There's a few things where it won't be, but most things will die to a double crit. So amazing synergy with Rapid Fire. And then what I'm actually going to do is I've decided this since starting the video, is I'm going to swap out Switchback. So I'm going to move across back to the roster. I'm going to swap it out because I've decided that I want to do something slightly different. So Switchback is known for having a lot of rapid fire in built, it's already good, but it doesn't really synergize very well with Taria because it can already get it itself, whereas Maximus obviously is just a very useful one drop, this doesn't really do the job. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to sort by Cinder Cost and I'm going to come down and find Amplify Bytol. So the reason with Bytol works really well with everything in the list, but especially Shrapnel with Rapid Fire and things like Rickety Backfire. So because Bytol gives Rickety plus one attack, it means that actually Rickety's dealing eight damage if they explode because the damage also is affecting the explosion. So with Rapid Fire, that can go up to 16 damage in one turn just from Rickety Backfire. So I think that's what we're going to go for instead. I was thinking originally making it so that every unit could be given a Rapid Fire, but thinking about it, most people know what Switchback does. It's a great finisher anyway. I think it's much more fun to have that Amplify Bite all in and try and make some uh, real synergies happen with these units. So what we're likely going to be doing here is we're going to be playing things like Maximus Turn 1, Deadeye Turn 2, Taria Turn 3, and then we've got our entire roster to choose from from that point forward. So we might play things out of order, but we want Taria to really be what shines here. But there's no reason in playing Taria out before we've got a unit that can use her. So that's why we're probably going Maximus Deadeye most games. Now, with this being a Zax Jakar list, we've actually got a really solid, aggressive start. So this might come across as almost like a variation on the aggressive Zax lists, but actually we've got a little sort of secret combo hidden behind there. So having Taria there as an option really does give us a little bit more flexibility. 
and maybe people will play a little bit more scared not realizing that you know we're not going for the same game plan of just drop all the cheap units consistently quickly every turn we've only got about half of our roster dedicated to that and the other half is dedicated to really fun things to do with rapid fire so i think this list got a great opportunity to win some games hopefully we're gonna do exactly that and i'll see you once we're in game okay we are back in the game we've just dropped in and we're gonna see what we come across here so we've got Zax versus Zax. So it's always a good start. Zax off. And let's see what we've got here. So what we want is to keep things alive. So I think Vortex being the most powerful assist that we've got here combined with Lifeline, it's probably really good for us. I don't think any of these are really going to matter. We've got a very niche list, so Stowaway won't help. And Medical Recall is reasonable, but I think Vortex and Lifeline is too good to pass up. And we're against an 11, 11, a level 11 player called Yoshi. So... We're on the draw here, so we get our second wind. Ooh, they got that hit first of all. And I'm assuming this is going to be their Maximus. It is. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the same shot. It's not going to be likely to hit. We did, which is nice. And then we're just going to tuck ourselves back here and play our own Maximus down here as well. So the reason we're doing this is we want to play it safe. And then next turn, we can potentially pull their Maximus out, especially depending on where they go. So maybe they just try to move up here, get a bit of distance. We can potentially kill it, and then for our follow-up with four Cinder, we can play something like, most likely, Tauria and Deadeye, but I'm also quite tempted by things like Shrapnel, because they look to be playing quite an aggressive list. So, we'll see what they come up with here. It might be the case that we just have to go for the, uh, the attempted kill onto Maximus. I do think that's quite likely. And they're playing Deadeye as well. So this is a very standard aggro list that we're currently playing against. So let's see what we can do with this. Now, though, I did see an angle where we could pull that slightly over there, but let's see if it's... So that looks to be as far as we can get. So let's just do that first. And see what we can do in terms of getting accuracy onto it. So this doesn't look unreasonable. We've got a decent line over here. So let's try Maximus first, because this matters a lot in terms of what we do. Okay. So having missed one of those, I'm just going to run back this direction. We don't need to be pushing up as close anymore and for that reason now I would be running this way to try and get a better shot if we hit but now I think it's a better option to just keep up this side keep a little bit safer and then deploy two units here so I was thinking actually two units is good but it might even just be time for shrapnel I think shrapnel being able to give additional armor is really useful here and I think that will help us hold our own a little bit better and then next turn is going to be the start of our uh, start of our Taria turn and see if we can get this big double hitting shrapnel out. So given that Taria only costs two, and next turn we're going to have three cinder, we'll be carrying one over to the next turn, and then on that turn we'll have second wind. So in theory, we might actually be able to place... Ooh, okay, they're getting a bit aggressive. Uh, we might be able to place our Amplifier Bytol down and Rapid Fire Shrapnel in one turn, and that could be a really serious swing in terms of damage here, so... We're going to try and move our game sort of in this direction. We are going to be on the back foot. But we're also perfectly fine taking some damage here, especially if it's onto Shrapnel, because we can just heal that on a later turn. If they spread out too much, then we're just going to move back in this direction and you know, keep things bunched up to where Shrapnel can be of use. Because we really want Shrapnel to be able to vortex and double shot the following turn and kill as many things as possible. If they deploy here... Yeah, so that's their Taria. They probably... I mean, they could have another one drop here, but not necessarily. If they move over here, I think that's possibly a mistake, because it just gives us free opportunity with our Maximus, especially if they don't hit anything. And I think that's a... Yeah, I think sneaking away might be the better option here. Zero percent chance to hit anything. It's just what we like to see. Okay, so we're just going to go for the hits over here. We don't have a good line of sight onto anything. Technically, we could get a small chance onto Maximus, so I'm going to move here and just see how big the chance is. It's 50%. Shrapnel can get in a good shot, so if we hit one of these, we're in a very good spot here. Okay, we did get our one. We'll pop back over here. We'll bring Shrapnel out. There's no angle to get more. Oh, there is, but I don't know if we'll be in range. No, we're not going to be in range, so we might as well get here and force them to move if they want to hit us. Again, we're happy with Shrapnel taking hits here, and here we're just going to play our Tari Arsenal. Back here, there's... I don't think there's anything really to try and do here. I mean, 
Okay, so we can get a line of sight this way. So let's just go with this. Might as well take the 50-50. Yeah, we missed. Pop Taria back here. Keep Taria safe. And this can really go well with our shrapnel turn next turn. So we're having seven cinder. So that does give us enough to play Amplifier Bytol, to pull things together, and Rapid Fire Shrapnel. And that should be an awesome, awesome turn. Potentially six damage. Their Dead Eye is going to struggle to keep out of range there. They're going to try and, I think, get damage across onto Maximus, it looks like. So I think they can probably get a good line of sight, but I don't know if it's worth it. But we are absolutely going to be trying to do our big shrapnel combo next turn. So this is exactly what I was hoping for when I put the list together. So I'm actually quite excited to see this go off. I don't even care if Maximus dies. Like, if he dies, it's sad, but that's not what I'm worried about. I'd love him to live to the point where we could use... Uh... Oh, go on. Yep, perfect. Uh, okay. I'd love him to live to the point where we could actually use Bytol and get even more damage out. Especially if they move somewhere over here, we can just pull these two units in together. That would be absolutely perfect. Take our one there, yeah. So if they don't go far back enough, we're in a really good spot. If they go too far back, it's a bit of an issue. This could be interesting. Playing their shrapnel there is very interesting, because this now means that we can go on to dealing with their exact same combo. Because this should be... In Okay, so Tari's going to have to move first to do the damage. Oh, sorry, to get in range. But I'm here for this. This should be fun. So to get in range, we need to be about here. So we'll just take the long shot as well. So we'll seize initiative. Meditating. We can absolutely... It looks like get in range of both. That does look to be correct. Are we just out? Okay, so we just have to vortex them in together. That's fine. This is this is all part of the plan. We use our cinder infusion. Get our amplifier bytol out about here. I'm so keen for this. Good chances to hit on both. Come on. <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh... I mean, I don't think we can quite take out Shrapnel here, but we can at least make things difficult for them. Let's make sure we stay in Bytol's aura. There we go, take a couple of damage there. Let's pop Zax in this direction. So we're going to be willing to take the hit on the backswing. Oh, we got the crit! It doesn't even matter. And we just take our ring. <laughs> yeah. That was beautiful. That was exactly what we wanted. Shrapnel double shotting something. Oh, that felt really good. Like that felt really, really good. I really want to do that again. I mean, at this point, I don't mind how many synergies we get off. I just want to do that over and over again. We should probably try for different ones in different games. For instance, I might try for either Crosshair or Broken Vengeance this time, but man, was that fun. I suppose it depends a lot on going first and second, so going second there was really good for us because it meant we got shrapnel out early, and we really did make good use of that vortex and just pull everything into range and just go for that big hit there. So we did get lucky a little bit hitting Taria with both hits. We were still likely to, but it was possible. We should have probably vortex first and then moved afterwards to make sure we can guarantee a better line of sight. But I'll admit freely, I forgot that vortex was the plan. So, it was uh, only until afterwards I was like, huh, I thought I'd be able to hit things. I then realised, that's probably why. Oh, we've got another game already. Excellent. So we can jump in and see what our rapid fire shenanigans will be able to pull up. So we've got an Extilio. The good thing about Extilio is it takes them time to get to us. So, hopefully we can drop a lot of uh, useful things here. Now, what did we take as our top end? I think it was just Crosshair. So, I kind of don't hate Escape Hatch and Vortex again. Let's do that. It was Crosshair, wasn't it? Yeah, Crosshair. Okay, so we're against Crippled Poet. It's a level 0 account, so this is where we just have to feel sorry for our opponent. We promise we don't hate you. We want you to enjoy the game, but I'm recording a video right now, so I don't feel like I'm allowed to be uh, anything other than quite far forward with my placement. I'm literally going to place this as far forward as I can. Yeah, I do feel bad when I come across low-level opponents. I don't want to be, you know playing against them for that sort of thing, but that's 
when I'm recording a video, I don't necessarily have that much time to record. So it's really nice to be able to just sort of... Well, not really nice, but like, it's useful to be able to just jump into a game and do the best that we can. So I apologise to any opponents that end up having to deal with this situation. So because they didn't play anything, we've just got to hope we get one hit here. So, because we need to get both hits rather, because 94%, because they put that shield on themselves, we did, so we can pop up, up here and hide away again. Uh, we are going to just keep moving forwards. There's no angle. Oh, there is an angle. 18%. Let's try that. Again, 50 50. We missed that one. That's fine. And here we'll just play Deadeye again. How far can you move? About there. So, we want to play Deadeye about here. So this gives us multiple ways of applying pressure to them, while also next turn having Crosshair, Vortex, and being able to play Artaria out. So we're going to see what they play and hopefully kill whatever spare unit they have. Okay, so they've gone for Maximus. Second wind, what's their other play going to be? Is it like an Esli or... It's an Aria, okay. So I think here the plan has to be to kill Maximus. Maximus is the most threatening. If we can pull them out into the open with both Extilior as well, that would be useful. Okay, so Extilior is still slightly out of range. So let's just pull Maximus slightly around the corner. That looks about right. Keeps Extilior where he is. Maximus can just pop in here and get his double shots. And I'll be honest, I feel like we still just hide back. Actually... Let's save that for in a moment's time. We'll do this first. Uh, we've got no lines of sight anywhere from here, but we have got one this direction. So can we get... So this is the best we can do. We'll take that for the sake of it. Wow, we hit. Okay. Are we going to pop Taria down over here? And we're going to just drop down our crosshair. I was kind of hoping crosshair would go a bit further forward than that. And let's see what we do from here. So, because Extilio popped himself behind this box, it actually uses some of their movement to move back out and around, and that makes it a lot harder to get in range of us. Okay, so they played a crankbait out. If we can get line of sight with the uh, crosshair onto crankbait, that would be excellent. But I think here, whatever we do, we're probably just going to rapid fire either Deadeye or crosshair and try and take something out. So, if we can get line of sight onto, cr onto crankbait, that would be perfect. If not, we'll just put it onto Crosshair, oh, sorry, to Deadeye, sit ourselves over here somewhere where it's a 100% chance to hit, and take out Arya. Unless they've got a stun or a Ion Storm. Okay, Ion Storm's quite good versus us. So what we need to do is figure out if Crosshair's got a good chance to hit anywhere. Luckily, Deadeye is great for this situation. So, we can't get anything onto, uh, onto Crankbait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place ourselves about here. So this way... What it does is it means that we've got a good line of sight here if we need it. A 91% chance to hit. But we can also move over here. Try not to block our own line of sight. See what is here. 43. So do we want to go for that or do we want to go for this? This would be 7% through that terrain. So I think what we're going to do... Oh, we're actually just out of range of seizing initiative. Can we get... Yeah, let's just seize initiative here. We'll release the Ozos here as well. And we're just going to go for big damage. Have we got a crit off? That's not bad. So, Maximus has got a very low chance to hit. Let's just take a few shots over here where we can. Uh, can we get any... Just pop over here, take whatever shots we can get. Uh, okay, most important thing, we're just going to place Rickety over here. Uh, we didn't really do much for some of our time. That We did run out a bit. I was trying to think a little bit too much. But if we can get the Rickety combo off next turn, we might be in such a good spot. Especially if we can Vortex things together. and for, So maybe even we move Rickety over here. If they move forward or something... Or even here, we can rickety and just attack uh, Crankbait and see what we can do with that. That could be a really fun way of trying to finish off both these units. Okay, so they are going to move apart. I still want to rickety something. I really do. I'm not going to uh, 
not going to deny that's what I'd quite like here. I'm hoping they play something down that we can get line of sight on with crankbait, uh, sorry, with crosshair and a vortex, because that's something that we would absolutely consider using vor Oh no, because we can't vortex, because then it cancels out the uh, crosshair ability. But we could vortex crosshair herself. Interesting. There's a lot of different things, because crosshair's got increased accuracy as well. So they can play a six drop. How defensive are they playing it? If they place it over here, we're in a really good spot to just kill it with crosshair. That's what we're going to do. We are going to... We, we could go over here with Rickety. I think Rickety's got things to do later on. So let's get Taria to siege initiative onto Crosshair. Crosshair can move over here. This should be 100%. Beautiful. And with guaranteed crits. Amazing. Exactly what we wanted. So now Rickety is just going to go in for this. Uh, we do have line of sight here, so let's just push this one in. Or we could... Can't quite vortex all three of us into range, can we? Uh, no, so let's just go with this. And try and get this explosion. Doesn't hit here, I don't believe. But we did still kill that, so that's nice. Uh, we want to probably just pull ourselves away from Detonia with that. Rather than take any other unnecessary risks. And we're just going to start chipping away at Crankbait, I think. So here we're actually going to move away a little. Because what we want to do is move back around behind Detonia again. Because that should still be out of range of Extilior while blocking Detonia into place. And then Taria's our sort of Piesta resistance, so we'll keep her over here. We missed. And Zax will just do his little shoot. And we'll call that a day. I don't think we need to worry about that. Save all our Cinder. Got plenty of things to do next turn. And we can go for some really nice little combos if we need to. Yep, so that's obviously the unit they're going to want to kill if they can. But they've only got three damage at sand stands at the moment, I think. Yeah, they're just short of getting both of these in, it looks like. Which is a shame for them, but it's good news for us. Okay, so let's see what we do from here. So the question is, what are they going to play that we can't kill? Because we've got a very good chance of killing anything using Crosshair if we can get in line of sight of it. And Crosshair's movement's long enough that yeah, we should be okay here. This could be a nano shield, actually. That does look a little bit like a nano shield they're about to activate. They looked like they were targeting a unit. Okay, so that's blocking some line of sight. That's a good idea. Okay, so it's just their regular shield. And are they just moving back there? Yep. Okay, so I think now we're just going to turn on the captain and we're just going to go all in on that front so we'll use rickety as when we can but I think our game plan here is all in on killing Ixtilior and I think that's exactly what we're going to be able to do we're not going to be far off of actually fully killing him immediately because what we want to do is move up here we want to place amplifier Bytol somewhere that everything we want can get in range and I think this looks about right so we'll start by popping over here and getting our damage in this side. We're going to Rapid Fire Crosshair. We're going to Ozo's Crosshair. And we're going to move just up here. As far back as we can to get the guaranteed angle for Zax as well. Take our huge hits here. Amazing. And get Zax in. We could even just Gravity Disc in closer together, but... We don't have any minuses. Let's just go for this. Big finish. Beautiful. This is working really well. Obviously, that, like I said, that was a level 0 opponent, but we've had two really good synergies so far. Both crosshairs worked really well. We were tempted to use it with Deadeye. We've done it really well with Shrapnel. So let's just see if we can jump into one more game and see if we can find one more uh, one more victim, I suppose. I'm really enjoying this. Like, If you want a fun list that's you know a little bit different, plays on synergies, this is actually playing out to be a lot, like quite a decent one. You know, of, of the fun lists we played, they don't always end up being the most competitive. But this seems reasonable. I mean, really taking advantage of the synergies offered by Taria and giving a range unit rapid fire. So far, the shrapnel one seems incredible. I love the idea of, you know, a three damage rapid firing shrapnel. I mean, I don't know many aggro lists that are going to survive versus that if you get Vortex. Or even Disruptor to a lesser extent, you know, push things where you need them to be. 
I think that's got a lot of potential. You know, it might not be game breaking, but certainly does hold its own bed than I thought it would. So once we hop into our next game, I'll join you back here and we can try and shotgun some more people. Okay, we are back. We have got ourselves a game and let's see what we're playing against. We're against a death by Stilio. So at least that means it's uh, someone who's played a lot of the game so far. They've hit level 50 in the season track. So let's see what we can do here. Looking at these assists, I think Corrosive and Stasis Field is going to be a good one for us. Corrosive is going to be great with our rapid fire theme. So let's go with this and see what we can do here. Oh, we're against Jester. Okay. It's unusual to see Jester playing an Extilior list, so that's quite interesting. I'm curious as to this must be sort of tournament practice or something along those lines. So let's go 13%. Best we can get. Take our 35% shot. We did hit. And as is uh, customary in this sort of uh, matchup, play your Maximus as far forward as possible. So we'll have to see what Jester gets onto here. I imagine they're playing their own Maximus. That is a shock to me. Now, we don't have the movement assist, so we can't guarantee getting a, the good shot onto Maximus here, but what we can do is pretty much guarantee a, see, guarantee a little bit of safety here. Okay, missing one of those is kind of brutal, but it is what it is. And we're going to get ourselves a 1% missed chance here. Take the shot. 69, come on. We missed the 69. Okay, so that wasn't the best turn in terms of uh, actual shooting power. It almost makes me think here that this is maybe even a turn to play Rickety Backfire, depending on where they can get up to. But I think we're going to play Deadeye instead, and just play it up here to protect Maximus. And just try and work on the uh, shooting it's still your back plan. So this is probably a Disruptor. I wouldn't be surprised if it is, get them into range of us. Because uh, they can probably push Maximus, oh sorry, Deadeye down here, and get a few attacks on it. But we've got a good amount of pressure that we can apply as well. So not too worried here. Especially if it splits them up and Maximus stays somewhere out of cover. But even if not, we've got uh, yeah, a lot of damage coming. Yep, so there's Disruptor. It looks like they might be able to get Extilior into range. Not quite. Okay, so that's really good for us. That's a lot of damage. So if they spin here, they can't play... Oh yeah, because they can spin and play uh, Scattervine. What have they got here? Okay, so this is their Rickety... So I think here we're just on the uh, try and kill Extilio plan as quick as possible. So that's just what we're going to do. Go for Deadeye first. Get Maximus in. And we need to start running in multiple different directions. We use Zax to get Extilio down even lower. And we will play our Taria Arsenal. I mean, this is a Taria list, but honestly, I think we're better off playing maybe even just Rickety over here. So their Rickety can get over there. So if we play ours here, it makes it really hard for them to actually place it down, just out of melee range, so they can't just do that. And then I think we want to move in this direction with Deadeye. And place a sleeper mine again just the other side of Extilior to keep him in place, but this time out of spin range. So I think this is our best option of uh, trying to finish things off here. It doesn't give them a good access with Rickety anywhere. We don't know what the second assist is yet, so it could still be something useful, but I think this is a really solid spot. Yeah. I don't see how they were going to come back from that. Jester is a fantastic player, but we had a really, really good start, especially getting that extra damage. Extilior not being able to fight back early on. That pretty much just tipped over the balance. Unfortunately, we didn't get to use Taria there, but we did get to use a little bit of Rapid Fire and Maximus, and that kind of shows you how you know, the list can compete at least with very, very strong lists. So I know that Jester's practicing for the tournament. I know that they're a very good player. I do think Extilio is obviously a pretty bad matchup for them. So at least in that situation, we can hold our own. It looks like we're playing mostly meta units, and we actually did play exactly our meta units there. But we could follow that up with the you know, other things afterwards and get to the sort of the fun combos. So all in all, three really good games. Really enjoyed them. That one was a lot quicker than some of the others, but it's a powerful list, and we got to do some really fun stuff. We got to use Amplifier Bytel with Rapid Fire twice. We got to use Rickety Backfire. Even the you no, know, not with Rapid Fire, it still did a good job here and there. We got to use the Amplifier Bytel Shrapnel Rapid Fire combo, which was insane. It did 12 damage. I mean, technically. 10 damage because two of it was reduced by armor but that's nuts and that was only against two units so 
really, really great deck. Or list, rather. Like, absolutely recommend this. I think this might be my f most fun sort of theme list so far. And that probably has to go in the title. So, if you've enjoyed this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm really getting keen for things again with Moonbreaker. Like, I'm getting a bit of a driving force back, having seen Charlie Cleveland's video, the one from the devs, saying what they're hoping to work on for the future so much to unpack in that i'm going to be doing a separate video on that hopefully if not we'll just discuss it in the discord instead most importantly drop a comment let me know what you think and more than any of that have a good day